coming back in. What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is of course a double header review where I'll be talking about two movies. Obviously Luca and Black Widow, both Disney movies, so I thought it was only fitting that I would combine the two together. And obviously a non-spoiler review. So I'll be talking about both. So all that exhibition aside, let's get started. The first one I'll talk about is Luca, which is Disney Pixar's latest combination. Pixar is a studio that I'm a pretty big fan of, so going into this movie, I knew nothing. I didn't need to. All I needed to know was that it was Pixar. Um, I've seen every Pixar movie now, except for The Good Dinosaur. Still need to watch that. But Luca, despite knowing nothing going into it, which I know is a trend of myself for 2020 and now 2020 and 21 of not knowing anything going into a movie, I gotta say, despite that, I still found myself disappointed. Um, I was not expecting to, because again, I do like Pixar, but I'll first talk about the positives. The first positive I did want to mention is that I thought the animation was outstanding. Truly beautiful stuff. Pixar once again proves why they're one of the best in the business in this category. Um, a feat for itself. I really liked it in terms of this category. And then I also really liked the voice acting. I thought the voice acting was on point all across the board. Every single voice acting performance was really good stuff. Um, and then I also thought that the sound mixing was pretty good for the most part. Um, and then I also think that a movie with a theme about acceptance, I thought that it could have been done a little bit better, but this is a movie that is geared more towards kids, and I think that a movie about acceptance geared towards kids is honestly a good thing. It is also something I feel mixed about, which I'll get into the negatives in a minute, but I do like the fact that kids are, you know, obviously being taught this, that, you know, acceptance and, you know, being able to accept oneself. I think that is important and that, you know, violence isn't the right answer. So I like that. I like those themes that this movie tackled. Unfortunately, I thought that the way it tackled it for adult audiences was meh. So by that, bear with me, I think that Pixar has always been great at balancing, you know, kid-related stuff with adult-related stuff, you know, mature themes, you know, adult humor, and I like that balance. I think that's a balance that's worked for years, but unfortunately, I think that it's more so geared towards kids. With Onwards and Now This, these are movies that are more towards kids, and I'll say this much. I'm fine with kids watching a movie like this and getting all these messages and everything. But I think that if you're an adult, you've seen a lot of movies. So you've seen all this kind of stuff been done in much better movies, honestly. Um, this movie, I couldn't help but think about Call Me By Your Name, which is an excellent movie. Obviously not a movie a young kid, six, seven is gonna watch. And The Little Mermaid is a movie that kids might find to be too old. But those are two movies I thought were better than this movie. And I couldn't help but think about The Little Mermaid two minutes into this movie. Now, I do always say that a movie can pay homage to other movies, and it can even borrow, which is arguably what a homage is. But here's the thing. It has to have some kind of identity. But I felt like this movie just, it had almost like an identity crisis. It's simple, but at the same time, it just felt like it was trying to do certain things that didn't fully work, especially towards the end of all my characters. I thought the character development really didn't work for me. Characters just did things, you know, characters just broke away from each other because, hey, it's the third act. And I'm not a big fan of those tropes. Um, I also really thought that the way that it was ending, again, I like the theme on a superficial level, but in terms of me taking away a lot, I didn't take much from this movie. And that's just me personally. I, again, like the filmmaking, but I just think overall, it's geared more towards kids. And your mileage on if that's gonna be something that you're able to accept will vary. If you have young kids, take them to see this movie. I, I totally get it. But if you want a movie that feels very fresh and invigorating, I would look elsewhere because as it stands, this movie, Pixar is pretty much replicating a formula that they've done in the past in much better ways. And that's just my personal opinion. But Luca, I will still give a two and a half out of five star rating. Um, I gave it that extra half a star because, well, the filmmaking is good. So that's my review for Luca. Here's to hear your guys' thoughts on Luca. But Black Widow, let's talk about that now. So Black Widow is also on Disney Plus, but it's for $30 as well as in theaters. I decided to opt and see it in theaters and I saw it in IMAX. Black Widow is the opposite. I knew everything about Black Widow and the reason for it was not even my own. It's that this movie was supposed to come out right before the pandemic happened. Actually, no, not right before. It was gonna come out, I believe it was like late April and the pandemic obviously hit in March. So I went to the theater a lot in the early months of 2020. And so I was bombarded constantly with the trailer for Black Widow. And same with the other trailers too, when they obviously were released after, you know, 2020, when it was finally realized that, hey, this is gonna be coming out in July. We got hit with even more trailers. So I've seen the trailer for this, you know, every variation of the trailer so many times. Um, I felt like I had already seen the movie, honestly, going into it. But that being said, I was still kind of excited because 
I am a big fan of Scarlett Johansson. Big, big fan. I think she's an incredible actress, a lot of range. I like the fact that she's able to blend both mainstream movies as well as art house movies into her resume. That's something not every actor can do. A lot of times actors will do art house movies, be found, and then obviously just do mainstream movies because it's where the paychecks are at. So I give her props for that. And Florence Pugh obviously is on the same track. She is also balancing the two, and I like that. So David Harbour also is someone that I am a big fan of. I was a big fan of David Harbour even before Stranger Things. I really liked him in like State of Play. Thought he was great in that, Revolutionary Road. He's a good actor. But I gotta say, oh, Rachel West, she's also really good. But the thing is, despite these four talented actors and actresses, I was disappointed by this movie. This movie felt like it was six, seven years too late. And I'm not even gonna say that fully, like that's the big negative. It's not that that's a big negative because obviously 10 years from now, if people watch this, they can watch it obviously in, right in between like, I don't know, Infinity War and Civil War. They can watch it that way, but I also can't help but say that even if you watch it that way, it feels so contained that I can't help but say to myself, why make this movie? And I'll get into that in the negatives because I do want to mention some positives. As I just mentioned, the cast members, they're clearly having a good time. They were enjoyable to watch. Their presence on screen was felt. I liked watching them, no doubt about it. And I do also have to say that there's not much else to say, really. The sound mixing was good. The visual effects were mostly good. Um, that's pretty much about it. I can't lie. There was a lot I didn't like about this movie. Um, I thought the cinematography mostly was bland looking. There were some scenes that were neat looking, but for the most part, pretty bland looking, which is unfortunate. They were on such a roll with obviously Black Panther, Endgame, and Infinity War with having interesting color grading in terms of the cinematography. Also, speaking of the cinematography, there's a lot of handheld camera work, which I like handheld camera work, but I thought that because they utilized it during the action scenes, a lot of times it looked like Michael J. Fox filmed it, and you just could not differentiate what was going on, and it was just... It was distracting to say the least, especially, especially because it wasn't even consistent. There were some action scenes where it wasn't fully shaky camera work, but then there were other times where it was. And there's a lot of also obvious stunt, stunt team work, which I get it. A big movie like this, there's going to be stunt work done, but it was just kind of obvious for myself. And then some of the CGI was also pretty dodgy, uh, which was not expected. I, this is a 200 plus million dollar budget movie, so I wasn't expecting that. The villain is pretty weak too. Actually, not pretty weak, was weak. You didn't get to know either of the villains. Um, you didn't really care about what they were going on. Um, it wasn't like T'Challa and Black Panther where you really cared or Thanos. You didn't really understand the motivations. You were just like, oh, they're a bad guy. Okay, they're doing this just because. Not a big fan of that. Um, I also think at the end credit scene, I really wasn't a big fan of because it's expecting you to have seen all the TV shows that are currently out. And for myself, I think that the TV show should be their own thing and the movie should be their own thing. And if it just so happens that you're watching both, cool. But the fact that there was like a kind of Easter egg where it's like at this point in time, audiences that have only seen the movies are going to be so confused versus audiences that have seen both aren't going to be confused. And I'm fine with some confusion, but I think despite the fact that I've seen both, I just couldn't help but say, oh my goodness, you got to be kidding me. Because one of the characters is saying something that they couldn't possibly know. And I'm not going to spoil it because obviously it's not a spoiler review, but the end credits just left a bad taste in my mouth. Also, here's the other thing. The pacing of this movie is bad. It's really bad. And the second act, it felt like it was really dragging. And the humor just didn't work in the slightest. So, again, a lot didn't work for this movie. I get it if people enjoy this movie, but I just I couldn't help but find that it was a waste of talent. Laura Balfi also did this movie. Like She did the score. And holy cow, the score just was forgettable. Like, there's also just so many references to other movies that I just couldn't help but say to myself, I could have been watching those movies. There's references to Mission Impossible Fallout. There's references to the James Bond movies like Skyfall. I could have been watching these movies instead of Black Widow, but alas, here I am. I'm reaching when I say this. Black Widow, for me personally, it was a disappointment. Um, I can see why some people might like it, but for myself, it just felt like your typical movie that just couldn't help but fall into a bunch of cliches and at the same time felt like too little, too late. I wish I liked this movie, I really do, but alas, here I am. Black Widow, I personally will be giving a two out of five star rating. Yeah, so neither of these movies get hot sauce ratings, but I am curious to hear both of your thoughts. I mean, your guys' thoughts, I should say, in the comment section down below of these two movies, because again, I know that a lot of people seem to be enjoying these movies and that's okay, but for myself, 
I was disappointed by both. So, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of both movies. And as always, thank you very much for watching with the subscription. Notification bell and I'll get you guys later.